climate change is the greatest threat that mankind faces in the 21st century. This is uh, the century in which has seen one of the highest amount of consumption of energy per capita across the world. But the highest intensity has been in the industrialized world, uh, so-called the advanced world which took advantage of the early generation of economic growth, economic potential, and thus took over the economy as a whole of the world in their hands. Hence, it's the rich countries, United States, UK, Europe, Japan, uh, Australia, these are the main major countries who have taken advantage of the first part of the 21st century and whole of 20th century to get uh, to this intensive energy consumption. Now, the big, other big countries such as China, India, South Africa and rapidly developing uh, small countries even like Singapore or uh, um, Malaysia and others are also using more and more energy as we go along. So, the energy consumption as a whole has increased the temperature of the planet. And this temperature is visible in the atmosphere, in the hydrosphere, that is the water bodies, oceans and rivers and all, and all around in the natural system. So, temperature indication has become one of the ways of how uh, energy is stimulating the growth and overall increase in the uh, atmospheric and the hydrological system. Consequently, the planet has limited capacity to uh, develop properly when all this increase in temperature uh, is happening more rapidly than before. The ecosystem, the trees and the plants and the uh, rivers, all are affected by the temperature that is around us and keeping on increasing. Climate change, a increase in temperature, is threatening uh, the ecosystem, the production system, our need to grow more food for more people, need to increase consumption, need to get safe drinking water, which is, as we know, that the ocean, which is the greatest reservoir of water, has very high content of minerals and is saline. It has a huge amount of salt in it. So that's not going to be very useful for human consumption. So human consumption has to go through a process of creating uh, 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 water, uh, pure, pure water. Two sources, one is the open water system, the other is groundwater. Both are recharged by rainfall in different countries, different parts, but the rate at which in many urban centers, big cities such as Delhi, Calcutta, Dhaka, um, in African cities and even in industrialized country cities, they are extracting more water out of groundwater than this can be recharged. So the future is going to be that the groundwater is going lower and lower down the system and subsequently will not have enough uh, to get efficient the water system out of that uh, decreasing um, uh, uh, um, uh, depth or increasing the um, distance to get safe uh, drinking water. So just water and energy are two, two such sources. They are direct link with food food systems. Every human being that comes to the world has come with two hands to produce food and do other things, but at the same time one big mouth to consume food. Richer one is, the richer amount of quality food is being in, in, uh, consumed and say for example one kilogram of meat is backed by hundreds of kilograms of water. So it depends on where and how you take it and uh, how it's used. So the future of the planet 
has to lower its consumption its use of energy its use of you know uh, quality water and also make sure that soil which is the source of most of the production doesn't get destroyed or um, uh, undermined in its capacity to produce food but the whole chemical composition of the planet is such that if we keep on extracting uh, more and more out of it the yield will become less and less nonetheless this is how the system uh, progresses and let's take the example of bangladesh the coastal area of bangladesh is now being inundated by salt water because the climate change induced sea level rise the sea level is in rising and a little rise in sea level means a deep penetration of water inside the southern part of bangladesh which is extremely flat this flat bangladesh in the south has been created over the last hundreds of years if not thousands with the alluvial deposits coming from the himalayas down the system and along the coast going to the south and it the slope is very low so a little rise in the sea level means a deep penetration of salt water into the system the fact that the water that comes from the sea is saline means that its production for say main crops like rice wheat or any of many of the other trees that has been accustomed to those areas say in the magro forest uh, all are threatened uh, and cannot produce the same amount of food out of it so that's just an example but fortunately bangladesh has huge amount of water coming through the three major river systems of the world the ganges the brahmaputra and the meghna system that washes down much of this water saline water down when during the rainy season but in the dry season despite this huge amount of water coming in you can look at it as if uh, in the dry season the rivers get narrower and narrower to a stream while in the wet season it becomes you know if not tens at least 5 7 km in the estuary inside of the near the bay of bengal so this oscillation across the uh, year and season, different seasons makes it very different different to have the guarantee that there will be high production of the crops in different parts and different systems so we have this limitation of seasonality on the other hand seasonality brings all the beauty all the variety all the biodiversity because of the temperature water uh, rainfall uh, content is different so collectively the production consumption system of the population and the food they use need the water they need is supplied by nature but we must make sure we don't destroy that nat- natural base by either over, over exploitation or enhanced pollution or extraction at a rate that the system cannot cope with but that's the reality that we are facing in many parts of the world in the riverine systems in the many many areas of the riverine system are becoming um, almost uh, unavailable for the highest productivity that it used, it used to have um in many uh, parts of the world our capacity to develop uh, has been mostly initially in the rural system where there has been enough trees enough open space where uh, free seeds could move ar- move around and fall and grow trees and create the system that was there but over the last decades if not centuries Uh, urban centers have sprawled all over the world initially it has been in the industrialized countries such as us canada australia uk europe um, japan but now it's happening in rapidly increasing developing countries china india bangladesh pakistan uh, in africa um, in egypt or many other countries across the world so this concentration 
makes it very, very difficult to keep the whole system going and feeding the population. And one has to look forward uh, how we best make sure that people can get enough nutritious food for a larger number of population that is coming ahead. Of course, even in poor countries such as Bangladesh, the population growth rate is coming down. So not as many people are born per day or uh, as, as it is used to. On the other hand, the consumption behavior as one gets richer and richer is such that it has more content of energy and material, rich materials or expensive uh, materials. The poor are eating less nutritious food, who needs the highest nutrition. On the other hand, the rich are eating uh, much more nutritious food. And so this balance between social uh, inequity with food inequity uh, is a competitive system that is challenging our civilization and in the years, years to come. Many of the developing countries, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Uganda, um, South Africa, all even Latin American, Brazil, uh, Argentina, all have different characteristics in their ways of consumption, production behavior. But nonetheless, if we take planet as a whole, then the consumption is an additive system of the whole planet's human behavior and human consumption. We have to be sensitive. We have to teach our young generation right from early days so that they become sensitive about these issues. Sadly, some of the values that we have created in the last, uh, say, 100 years of capitalism is that more you have, the bigger guy you are, the smarter you are. More consumption, more money, more accumulation, and more ownership of natural systems as well as productive systems makes you a better, bigger person socially and otherwise. These false values have created enormous amount of challenges. Not that they have not been challenged by wise people across the world during various times. Uh, consumption modesty has been one of the essence of all religions. Uh, nonetheless, uh, at one level, religious influence is going higher and higher, but the consumption behavior associated with it hasn't reflected those values. So we as a group of uh, human beings uh, haven't done really that well uh, in, in the system. And the poor who are suffering without food, a lot of ailments, lack of um, health care. So across the developing world, right now the greatest challenge is food security, energy security, water security, health security, and livelihood and employment security. Those are the securities that has to be obtained for the planet to start moving in a fairer way. And we have to get a much better balance of it. Otherwise, initially it might take a few decades, but there will be uh, intolerance and conflicts, and, and those are not going to help the system to grow better and fairer. So fairness is one of the integral part. At the same time, consumption has to increase. Good health has been uh, one of our life's great achievements and longer longevity. There are serious questions, how long should longevity be? And these are not only theoretical questions, now it is coming to practical domain because it's challenging the security of energy system, food system, water system that we have. All that combined together will lead us towards a, what we call a sustainable future for the planet, all human beings as a whole, and all other species. Human beings trying to survive as a species and at the cost of other species is not going to help anybody, definitely not the human beings in the decades to come. So we have to be much more serious about the impact of climate change, the need for development and a fairer world, equitable, 
justifiable and what can be taken on and who will be have to work on the future generation that is coming with a sense of fairness a sense of values of longevity at the same time keeping health well not only for few but for all it's a might sound like a european future but that is the future you have to we have to go if we want to get to accommodate everybody uh, we hope that we move towards a future which is more just across the globe more just across the gender men women other gender attributions across age groups so that we don't have to push the elderly or the children not being able to uh, get enough uh, substance uh, su su substantive food and so the knowledge that we are getting is quite big in terms of all the knowledge that we are getting the traditional knowledge in the old religious systems across the world in indian subcontinent in uh, arab world in latin america in uh, traditional values of uh, the indigenous people of africa and europe and uh, america all that we have to learn to assimilate to get to a better world fairer world more just world and a consequently uh, might sound very cliche but a happier world for all let's look forward to that and we have to all work together towards that end thank you